This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We are into November, and yet on Saturday, we have three undefeated teams taking on ranked opponents. We have got Michigan taking on Penn State. We have got Utah versus Washington and Ole Miss at Georgia all on deck for Saturday. We're going to break down all three of those games, talk some college football playoff scenarios, and much more today with Dr. Ed Fang. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Join here as I am every Wednesday by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work at thepowerrank.com and check him out on Twitter at the Power Rank and Ed. We keep talking every week about this Connor Stallions thing. There are new updates every single day, it seems. And now the pushback is coming from Michigan as well. So it's an evolving story. I'm still having fun with it, honestly. Like you asked me about the, the Travis Kelsey Taylor Swift thing. I was still enjoying that. I think this is in the same bucket where like it's a lot of content, but it's still kind of fun. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I think I'm enjoying it more than most Michigan fans who are kind of worried about it. And uh, I'm not, I'm really not. I enjoy finding, uh, you know, the new leaks every day. And it seems like Michigan is getting into the investigation and leaking game as well, which is, uh, I don't know if you're a third party, you got to think that's interesting, right? Like fighting yeah. back and playing the game. We'll see where it all uh, lands. I don't think anything's happening this season. I'm yeah. pretty sure no one's getting suspended. No one's going to be not not going to be able to play football games and i think that's good for college football um and and then we'll see where it leads to in the future yeah i mean like you need to audit all communications in order to prove there was like collaboration and intent and that's gonna be a big part of it like you could ding people for oversight not you know knowing that this is going on but like that's a different level of offense than it was being coordinated so i don't think this is a, a fast thing like you're gonna see the the, the daily talk shows talking about like, oh, can they ban Michigan from the college football playoff? Like, that's not going to happen. Not, so yeah. that'll be like a talking point. But it, in reality, it's not going to happen. So why bother wasting your breath on that? But honestly, like, that's why it's fun for me is like the stakes for now are kind of low. Um, and it, like, it's just kind of a funny story that keeps on giving us more entertaining stuff. Like yeah. Connor Stallions with vacuums outside his house is the new thing. So honestly, it's just been a it's been a thrill so far. And I'm not bored of it yet. What was the vacuum thing? I might have missed that. Was that the So he moved into a house in in Ann Arbor and had a bunch of like vacuums piled up outside his house. I think he was like selling them on Amazon or something like that. And a neighbor complained and he accused the neighbor of being a Michigan State fan who was mad at him for being on the Michigan coaching staff. Oh, I, I gotta find this guy's house. Yeah. <laughs> <He's a vacuum laughs> cleaner. Gotta go walk around. Gotta go walk around town looking for scouting vacuum mission. Cleaning. That's your assignment, right. your homework assignment for next week. Uh when we have our 13 new updates on the story that we'll have to talk about. But luckily, and also the on-field product, pretty fun for this week. As mentioned, all those good games coming up. We're going to break down those games and more in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Later on today, Tom Vecchio is going to preview the Panthers at the Bears, the thrilling Thursday night football matchup for this week. Tom will break down props for that game in the same podcast feed. Also over on FanDuel TV Plus to get FanDuel TV Plus. Go to FanDuel.com slash watch and log in with your FanDuel account or download the FanDuel TV Plus app on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku devices. Tomorrow, Ed will be back with us to preview NFL Week number 10. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There is a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $5 pregame money line wager required. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. 
See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9 with it in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text OPEN-Y in New York. Now, Ed, last week here on the show, you talked about Oregon, how they had been on the rise, and they're now even money to make the college football playoff at FanDuel Sportsbook. If you take a look at the hypothetical matchups later on, FanDuel makes them, Oregon, a six and a half point favorite over Washington in the Pac 12 championship game, should that wind up being the matchup. So, even money now to make the playoff, Ed, is the value in Oregon now gone with this rise? Probably. I mean, Oregon's a team that I've been pretty high on. They were really unfortunate to lose that game against Washington, a pretty close game. And, you know, when I updated my site on Sunday, it wasn't Ohio State that was first. It wasn't Michigan that was first in my college football member rankings. It was Oregon. They really have uh, they really have performed over the last couple of weeks. And um, when I looked at your question, I was like, oh, that's interesting. I would actually make Oregon a nine and a half point favorite over Washington. Wow. We'll get into Washington a little bit more later in the show. Um, but, you know, or- Oregon is a team that's done really well. I mean, we talked about how Dan Lanning brought in a bunch of transfers and uh, Oregon, Washington, USC all had issues on defense coming into the season. Oregon has definitively fixed them. About four weeks ago, I proclaimed that I thought I had some faith in USC's defense. That turns out to be one of my worst takes over the last decade. And, uh, you know, and now uh, USC is kind of bad. And uh, I I don't know how many point favorite is Oregon over USC this week. It's it's a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, Oregon, even money that that honestly sounds pretty enticing right now to make the playoff. I think there's obviously not a shoe in, but I, I I like this team. Um, Bo Nix could win the Heisman that that's yeah. absolutely in the realm of possibility. <laughs> and, you know, honestly, he would be the front runner had they just converted a couple fourth downs against Michael yeah. Penix and Washington a couple weeks back. He's been incredible. Uh, yeah, that total or the spread for USC Oregon, 14 and a half total is 73 and a half. These Pac-12 games rule from a totals perspective. So huge fan of that. Uh, but Oregon, 14 and a half point favorites there. As you mentioned, the hypothetical uh, matchup is Oregon by six and a half against Washington. You've got it at nine, you said, or nine and a half? I would make it about nine and a half. I mean, okay. I would definitely see value in Oregon minus six and a half right now. Would you grab that now just to kind of get ahead of things? Or is that not the way you tend to operate with these? Because I know that your, your college football I mean, numbers do update pretty aggressively as you get new info. So it could change by then, I guess. I mean, it, it depends on your goals. I'm pretty yeah. sure you can't get too much down on Oregon minus six and a half in the Pac-12 championship game right now. So, you know, if you just want a fun bet, yeah, sure. Go for it. Bet it okay. now. Yeah, so take a look at the the Oregon prices. Uh, even money right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Ed seeing some potential value there, but just in general, being high on Oregon does seem to be the way to go right now. Let's dig into some of these games that across Saturday's action begin uh, with the Michigan Wolverines taking on Penn State. And this spread has tightened. It was five and a half. It's now down to four and a half at FanDuel Sportsbook. Total is 45 and a half. And Penn State's offense against Ohio State, really underwhelming there. And now they face another very, very good defense. So can Penn State do enough on that side of the ball to cover this four and a half point spread? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, the spread doesn't interest me too much simply because my numbers have Michigan by 4.8 points, about five, pretty close to the markets. A couple of weeks ago, this is pretty much what I said I would make this game and and not much has has changed since. Uh, but I do think there is an angle here, and I think it's on the total. And one of the reasons that I think there's value on the total is because of strength of schedule. Um, coming into the season, we knew that Michigan, for the second year in a row, was not playing anyone. 
And that has been true. I kind of expected, even when I was calling Michigan overrated at number two in the preseason poll, it didn't really start until this week, right? Like I expected them to be nine and zero, and they are nine and zero. And so, uh, so yeah, let's let's talk about Michigan and their schedule, right? Um, and I think it's important to break this down in terms of offense and defense. So let's look at success rate, and we'll make my adjustments for opponent, but. When you talk about like Michigan's defense, like the raw success rate allowed numbers are phenomenal. They've allowed 30.8% success rate. Uh, that's very good compared to 41.1% college football average. Penn State is actually right there. They're a tick better at 30.7% in raw success rate. Uh, but you kind of got to look at who they've played. When you look at Michigan, they haven't faced anyone good. The best offense they faced by my numbers was Purdue last week. Uh, they're 56 in my adjusted success rate. You look at teams like Minnesota, Michigan State, Nebraska, they all rank 98th or worse. You're taking a raw success rate that's one of the best in the nation. You make my schedule adjustments, and Michigan gets dropped all the way to 16th. That's a significant drop. That's the effect of, of this schedule, right? And when I look at this team, I have a lot of faith in the offense. We'll get to that in a sec, but I don't have a lot of faith. I mean, I have faith in the defense, but I still think the defense needs to prove itself. When you look at Penn State, just for comparison, remember they had about the the, the same raw success rate. Uh, they faced better offenses, most notably Ohio State. Uh, but West Virginia is also not bad. They opened the season against West Virginia, uh, a top 25 team when I look at adjusted success rate. When you adjust their numbers down, um, they actually end up fourth in my college football uh Defense rankings by adjusted success rate, actually third. Um, so that just gives you a sense for how the schedule is impacting what my numbers will say. Uh, I think the image of Michigan's defense is better than their actual performance. There's a little bit of a danger that this is a defense that is just beaten up on opposing offenses uh, that are not very good. And, uh, you know, that may or may not be true. We'll find out this weekend. Um, but on offense, like the story is actually a little bit different. You know, they uh, Michigan has a really good offense by raw success rate as well, 53%, and that's fourth best in the nation. And they've actually done this against some pretty good defenses. As bad as Nebraska's defense is, ah, excuse me, as bad as Nebraska's offense is, their defense is pretty decent. They're 21st. Michigan actually had a 54% success rate in that game. Uh, Purdue is another team. They're 49th. Uh, in defense and and Michigan also had a pretty good success rate 47 percent last week in honestly what I thought was JJ McCarthy's worst game so I think the Michigan offense is good I think the Michigan defense is bad my numbers are showing value on the total I, I make this closer to uh 52 so I think there's value in over 45 and a half uh I guess we should talk about Penn State's also offense a little bit uh I don't think they're as bad. I don't think Drew Alar is bad as he showed against Ohio State. Uh, he actually kind of let loose a little bit last week against Maryland, had 240 pass yards, which was his biggest total against the Big Ten defense. Do I think he's good? Probably not. But has the Penn State offense underachieved a little bit? Probably. Um, I think they can keep it close. And I, I do think there are going to be some more points in this game than the market expects. So, So I like the over here. Over at 45 and a half is minus 105 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, and you have it close to 52, so good amount of value there. I'm curious with you, uh, when you're looking at those adjusted success rate numbers, if I look at like SP Plus over ESPN, it does still have Michigan pretty high even after the adjustment. So is that because they've done a good job of suppressing big plays? Uh, you know, they're not letting up a lot. Or are they getting, you know, is the big play factor to kind of explain how that's gone on there? What, what do you think is the key to explaining why Michigan has been so good in some metrics when you adjust for schedule, maybe not as much in success rate? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Let me look real quick what I have them at in terms of yards per play. Um, you know, I mean, they're they're actually worse when I look okay. at yards per play adjusted for opponent. They're 22nd. Um, I mean, I'll just say, like, I really trust the way that I do schedule adjustments. I sure. wouldn't be talking to you right now if I didn't, if I <laughs> weren't pretty good at that. Um, they've beaten up on a lot of bad offenses. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Penn State's 
offense is nearly that bad. So this is a test. They got to go on the road. I actually see like, I don't know. I see a pretty wide range of outcomes. Sure. I can see Michigan mauling them. I can see Penn state like having a great game and, and winning big. Uh, I think there's a wide range of outcomes here. So um, yeah, I think it's going to be a good game. And I think that the, the, one of the big edges in college football is making proper schedule adjustments. I know we're into November already. There are nine games in, but there are still very disparate strength of schedules across each team. So that's where you can find an edge. You have been studying this for a very, very long time. So if you can find an edge in that regard, specifically with a total or something like that, I'm very willing to trust it. So I do think that there is a lot of incentive for me to add, to follow you on that one with the over 45 and a half, which is minus 105 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Let's move now to our second game, which is Utah at Washington, where right now the spread in this game for Utah and Washington, nine and a half points uh, favoring Washington. Total is 51 and a half. That's down two points from where it was yesterday. And Washington able to top USC in a shootout there, but they did have a midseason lull. Um, and I don't know if it's too early to say they're, they're past that now, but they did at least play better there. I know the receiver room still not fully, fully healthy as of yet. So how do you see this game playing out at? Right. I think the final score of last week's Washington at USC game was a little bit deceiving. Washington was able to pull away at the end, but honestly that game was back and forth the entire night. And it really came down to one play where Caleb Williams just couldn't get out of the grasp of a defender, took a sack. You'll see it had to end up punting instead of tying the game with a field goal. There's many way, different ways that that, that could have gone. I, I, I mean, I don't see that uh, as a really good game for Washington. Uh, this, this program is kind of, uh, you know, they haven't been as good recently, which is fine. I mean, it's just, um, you know, they, they haven't been particularly good lately. Uh, their defense ranks 50th in my justice success rate. That's not particularly good. They haven't been able to solve the defensive side of the ball like like Oregon has. And then, you know, you can kind of make a case that Utah is figuring it out. Uh, uh, okay, so they're, they've figured it out all, all year on the defensive side of the ball. They've always been good. But, you know, you come into the season, you expect Cam Rising to play, and he doesn't. And Bryson Barnes has kind of come in. And they, they've had some – decent games uh recently on offense so again the college football average is about 41 percent, and they did 45 and a half percent against arizona state they're the 47th best defense by my numbers 47 percent uh against usc uh they're 54th in my adjusted success rate a lot worse in, in my yards per play uh, I mean, obviously they got their coordinator fired. So if, if you laugh at 54%, 54th in the nation, uh, you're welcome to do that. But also, you know, like, and then 51% against Cal, uh, which has the 76th best defense. So, you know, we're starting to see some decent success rate numbers for this, this Utah offense It's probably a little bit better of, uh, an offense than, uh, what, uh, what was happening at the beginning of the season. And, in, you know, my numbers actually like Washington by about five and a half here. I do see a lot of value in, in Utah plus nine and a half. Uh, I do think there's some value on the side. Okay, so the plus nine and a half on Utah is currently minus 110 at FanDuel Sportsbook. And I think that this is, this is something that kind of helps explain why you're so far above market on the Oregon hypothetical too with with washington where it's common kind of of your numbers like in oregon state or oregon justifiably but then also it does seem like you're lower on washington and again you talk about your explanation with that usc game it makes sense to be lower on them if the final score in a high profile game does not match with what the underlying numbers say actually occurred during that game utah is not a sexy team necessarily but like they've been a good team and it sounds like they're trending up and and i think that's also kind of explainable edward too right where They've had this turnover at quarterback kind of fluidity there. It makes sense to take a while for things to click offensively. So I feel like to me, that makes me more willing to buy into what your numbers are saying, just because you can kind of explain why that may line up narratively. Absolutely. And at this point in the season, I look at my numbers, I compare them to the market. And if, if, if you can't find an explanation for this, I usually tend to stay away. I think the college football markets are very sharp at this point of the season. So uh, I really do need reasoning like this. Um, you know, one team's coming down a little bit. That would be Washington. Another team is probably trending in the right direction on one side of the ball. 
that would be Utah. Uh, I think that kind of uh, reasoning is is really important before before you make wager. All right, so we are on Utah plus nine and a half here against Washington in that game. Let's finish up here by talking about Ole Miss at Georgia. Another pretty fun game here as we have Georgia as 10 and a half point favorites at FanDuel Sportsbook. Total in this game is 58 and a half. And Ole Miss, Ed, has won five straight since their loss to Alabama, but a lot of close games in that span. against some decent competition for sure, but some close games. So can Ole Miss keep this one close enough to cover a double digit spread in Athens? Yeah, uh, we'll see. I mean, Old Miss has been really interesting just with, uh, you know, coming into the season, how much Lane Kiffin was using the transfer portal. And you look at the list of names that he brought in on defense, and it wasn't exactly power programs that he was getting these guys from. Uh, but I, I feel like, you know, when you're when you're doing the transfer portal thing, you're kind of rolling the dice a little bit. And you rolled the dice, and it's actually been pretty good. Uh, they rank 43rd in my just success rate, a lot better by yards per play. They are 12th. So, you know, so far, so good. Uh, on offense, they do what Lane Kiffin teams do. They are pretty efficient, 19th in my adjusted success rate. So, yeah, you know, it's an interesting season. They're 8-1. and one. They got throttled by Bama by two touchdowns, and then they're 4-0 in one-score games against other teams in the SEC West, arguably one of the toughest divisions and 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 all of college football. My numbers like them. Uh, you know, I have Georgia winning by eight point three points. Same argument as last week. I'm not uh, I'm not willing to get in the way of Georgia. I think they're, I mean, an elite program that is probably trending in the right direction. Uh, I, I don't think there's enough, you know, obviously if Ole Miss is able to move the ball against the Georgia defense that looks I mean, very suspect compared to what they put out on the field the last two years. Uh, sure. Can they keep it close? For sure. Uh, I'm not too interested here. I'm, I'm going to stay away, even though my numbers like it. I think that that we're at the point in the year, too, where it's pretty easy to find reason not to like a bet. And that's always OK to not bet it. You know, you can show value all you want. You never have to bet anything. So I think that knowing when to not take the value is also a pretty valuable skill to have. And you've been doing this for long enough where you kind of know where you just rather watch the game uh, rather than taking it. So I agree. I think it makes a lot of sense here. Georgia has looked good despite the absence of Brock Bowers, playing some pretty tough teams. Another one here for sure. All due respect to Ole Miss, but I do understand why you wouldn't really want to dabble in those waters betting against Georgia right now. But still two bets Ed does like here for this week. Michigan and Penn State over 45 and a half, minus 110. And Utah plus nine and a half, also minus 110 in that game against Washington. That's all we got here for today on covering the spread. Ed, what is going on for you this week over at the Power Rank? So many things. I uh, just had Kevin Cole on the football analytics show. Always so knowledgeable about NFL football analytics and the rest. So catch that uh, anywhere you get podcasts. Uh, my podcast is the football analytics show. And then, you know, working on my email newsletter. Uh, every Saturday, I send out Five Nuggets Saturday, which is my curated list of sports betting tips um so if you're looking for any action on any given weekend uh check that out at thepowerrank.com all right powerrank.com thepowerrank.com for that the football analytics show for the podcast with kevin cole was always a delight to listen to find ed on twitter at the power rank i'm on twitter at jim sonis you can follow fanduel research on twitter at fanduel research and obligatory i am on threads at jim.sonis as well primetime tom with tom vecchio coming up later on today to break down bears and panthers for thursday night football ed is back with me again tomorrow to break down all of week number 10 in the NFL. You can find that right here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, the FanDuel YouTube page, and FanDuel TV+. Plus. We'll talk to you all once again tomorrow. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs>